Good morning everyone and welcome to my November garden tour. As my growing season is coming to an end, I still have quite a few surprises that I would like to share with you. My petunias are just starting to take off. Can you believe that? But that's good old crazy California weather for you. And my marigolds are still holding on. But when I noticed the little seed pods are forming, I just pop them off and throw them back in the dirt because that's how these marigolds grew, all from seed. Okay, here's something really, really funny. My Mexican sunflower actually just bloomed. Can you believe that? This is November and there's buds on there. That's crazy California weather for you. But it's so pretty. I haven't started my winter veggies in these little Dollar Tree pots yet. Just been very busy with work. But check this out, this chrysanthemum. Where I work, there's a floral department and I get plants at discount. And this one actually survived and it's doing so wonderful. I got this plant for 50 cents. My bougainvillea is holding on. This is the very first year I've had it. So I imagine next year it's gonna grow all the way up the trellis. More marigolds in the pot, but my vinca is starting to come to an end. Although some of them are holding on, the ones that are turning yellow are definitely going to seed, but that's okay because when the seeds drop, I just hose them back into my garden and I'll have more vinca for next year, besides all the seeds that I've collected in envelopes. I love my little star lights I got from Gigalumi. They sent me those for free and I made a review video. In this pot, I believe I planted carrots. I'm told those are a cool season vegetable, so we'll see how those do. More starlights from Gigalumi, and my creeping Jenny is holding on. This was one of the funnest things. I don't think funnest is a word, but this was one of the most fun things I grew this year, creeping Jenny. Real quick, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here because there's not much to see, but my narrow space vegetable garden is all done for the year. In springtime, that will be revived with fresh new tomato plants, peppers, and you name it. They grow so good back here. But goodbye, Narrow Space Vegetable Garden until spring. My winter veggie garden bed is doing pretty good. I got these beds from Vegiga and I did a product review video and I absolutely love them. I thought this was cabbage, but I'm thinking that I'm wrong. That might be some kind of a collard green. I have no idea. There was no tag on the plant when I got them, so I will definitely be surprised. But behind that, I believe that's kale. And I have some broccoli that I grew from seed. I love how my vintage bathtub is looking this time of year. The alyssum is just spilling over and the marigolds seem to really like it in here as well. The Pugster butterfly bush is in kind of like a dormancy stage, but that's okay because my yarrow is really enjoying this cooler weather. And that big mound behind it, that's a Shasta daisy. So that has definitely multiplied and tripled this season. What I'll do is I'll eventually dig that up and separate them. That's how I got that one just by separating the, I think they're called rhizomes. Vinca, the Vinca minor or major at trails and more creeping Jenny. Do you know that I only started with one little teeny tiny plant of creeping Jenny? That's how I got all the creeping Jenny in my yard. My Vinca is still looking okay. It's kind of in between. It's not liking this colder weather, but that's okay. It's producing a lot of seeds for me and I'm scattering them in my garden and saving them in envelopes and that's how I grew all these. I really didn't buy any plants this year. Everything just grew and came back from seed. 
more vinca in these pots. I think they're good for about another couple weeks. I definitely had to cut back my bee balm that was getting diseased. I got this little strawberry pot at a yard sale for $5. My strawberries are holding on. Okay, now this plant just reeded, reseeded itself everywhere in my garden. I think it's those little teeny white daisies and this is popping up everywhere. See, there's more down here. So what I do is I just dig them up and then replant them in other places in my garden. Probably when I hose off my patio, all the seeds end up going there and that's how they reseed. So I picked up those little seedlings and I repotted them here and I repotted one here, right there. Isn't it amazing how the petunias are just taking off? They really, really love this cooler weather. Look at that beautiful white petunia. And below that, yep, you see more Creeping Jenny. I love Creeping Jenny. It's just so easy to grow and it really adds a nice filler to any pot or garden, in my opinion. And look at my beautiful coleus. Is that massive? Now I normally pluck off the seeds, the seed pods, the flowers because it encourages more growth. But I know this plant is coming to an end, so I actually want to get seeds so I can plant next year. And I grew this from seed. Can you believe that? I bought a little $1 package of colia seeds from the dollar store, and I grew that from seed. I'm so proud of myself. In my next video, I'm going to be repainting that door. You know I have a lot of garden art and painted furniture in my yard. But of course, at some point, the weather, you know, the weather kind of ruins them. And every few years, I repaint and refresh them. So that's going to be in the next video after this one. Because my garden is so small, this is how I add color. I don't always have room for a lot of plants, but there's always room for one more bottle. I just hammer rebar into the dirt, go to the thrift store and pick up bottles for a dollar or two and stick them on the rebar. Okay, let's go over here and see what's going on. I get all these little stands and things in my garden from thrift stores and garage sales. I made these little flowers from horseshoes and inside that is some type of a agriculture, agricultural tractor part. You know, that the center of the flower, I don't know. So in this veggie box, I have a fig tree. I used to get figs off of it until the birds discovered it, but oh well, that's okay. I don't mind feeding the birds my pugster butterfly bush is kind of in a dormancy stage and my gara is done blooming oh it looks like i have a little lamium back here look at that those are so pretty another sedum autumn joy this is so pretty this just grew from a little snippet and I put it in the dirt and it created a whole new big plant. I just love that. Next year, it'll probably be three times as large because that just grew from a little tiny one inch nub. My succulent barrel. I made a video about this. I divided and separated everything. And my broccoli patch. I just threw a bunch of seed down and they took off. And they seemed to be doing very well. A silver falls trailing down right there. And more petunias. I'm telling you, these petunias love this cooler weather. There's my compost pile. One of these days, I'm hoping that a company will reach out and send me a free composter to review.
And here's my other veggie box from Vegiga. Look at the broccoli. They grew from seed and they just love this spot. Didn't they get so big from the last time I made a video? Broccoli is so easy for me to grow, so that's why I enjoy growing it. And those benches, that's my little propagation station. It's where I start things from either seeds or cuttings. And all those are more Creeping Jenny. I don't know if propagating them in the colder weather was such a good idea, but we'll see what happens. One of my favorite things to propagate and grow is string of pickles. Makes beautiful yellow flowers in the spring. So pretty. In this veggie box, I have a pineapple sage. Did you know that if you cut the leaves off or the flowers, you can actually eat the flowers and the leaves smell like pineapple. I guess that's why they call it pineapple sage. And here's another mound of Shasta daisies. This mound came from the other mound. I grew one Shasta daisy from seed and then it made a whole bunch more. <laughs> Sometimes I don't always talk right, but you know what I'm talking about. Another Mexican sunflower. Can you believe that? It's so crazy. And below that, I have a ton of carrots. I don't remember throwing the seeds down there, but I guess I did. Here's a view from the other side. I have some pretty zinnias. And more wave petunias that came back from seed and some vinca behind it. Oh, check out my cucumber. Now, I know I should pick that and eat it before it gets too big, but I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let that go to seed. I'll just let this baby go to seed, but oh man, doesn't that look good? I suppose if I were to cut it now, I could enjoy it. So I'm going to have to give that some thought, but that's my cucumber. I'm proud of that cucumber. Now I have to show you this, my beautiful passion flower vine. It's climbed up the first cattle panel arbor and it's making its way to the second one. That was my like a little dream. I just wanted to see it cover two cattle panel arbors and it's doing such a good job. And it's even producing fruit. In the springtime I only got one fruit but now in the fall I'm getting many. Every time I pull back leaves I find more fruit. They're a little hard to see. They just basically camouflage with the rest of the plant. And if you notice those little notches cut out in the leaves, those are from leaf cutter bees. The leaf cutter bees love the passion flower vine for their nesting material. This was one of the best things that I've grown this year. And if you notice, it's producing a whole bunch of new little buds. This was an awesome plant to grow, the passion flower vine. I would say one of my most successful plants I grew this year. Oh look, and I just discovered another fruit. Yay! <laughs> Every time I look, I find more. Now behind my brick wall, there used to be a building behind there and it was torn down, so it's very bare. Maybe you can help me think of a really pretty tree to plant. I'm thinking about putting a Chinese pistache back there, but it definitely needs a tree. And that pile where I'm composting, that's where I'm going to plant it. So it's going to go in between that Japanese maple and this red crepe myrtle. So I need a tree right there. I'm thinking a jacaranda would be so beautiful, but that might be too big. A Chinese pistache might be a good idea. I would love to know what you think, or maybe a red bud. So tell me what you think, because that's gonna be one of my next projects. 
My beautiful lantana is all done blooming. And it always makes these crazy purple berries. I guess it still provides more food for the birds. They seem to like them. Gotta plant something in that tire. I just love this little pot or wash basin. I have a Calibacroa, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, as my spiller, a Carex grass as my filler, and a beautiful Coleus as the thriller. Thriller, filler, and spiller. I'm really proud of that little arrangement. And of course, my little patio, my little happy place. I love colored bottles. And one of the best things that I've grown this year is my coleus. They seem to love this spot. Look at those beautiful colors. God is so amazing. All glory to God for his beautiful creation. And this maiden hair fern. Do you know that this has been here for many years? It never dies. Once in a while, I'll get some little brown leaves, but then I just pick them off. But it loves this spot. Even in the winter time, it never dies. I guess the patio gives it shelter and it gets just enough light to thrive. And I love my little fabric butterflies that I got at the thrift store for $1.50 each. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's garden tour and I hope that you're enjoying your garden in November as well. Bye-bye.